This is a 12th century English manuscript uh, made probably in the north, the north of England, I would guess in Durham, which is one of the great centres for the making of books in the 1180s. And it's a book of natural history. We tend to think of the Middle Ages as being entirely books of religion. Um, this is where religion and natural history cross over together. Part of it is Isidore's Etymologies, um, a kind of encyclopedia of the natural world. And then it ends up here with a bestiary. This is a book of all the known animals of the world, what they're for, where they live, how you catch them, why they were made, why they're called that, um, and what their significance is. Um, it explains them both in terms of natural history and of um, their religious importance. Um, the page which will be uh, on exhibition in Melbourne is this one, uh, which shows the elephant. Of course, no one in England had, in the 12th century had ever seen an elephant. They knew them only by repute. And um, Pliny describes how um, an elephant can't bend its legs. And they knew of these creatures as big as a mountain, they said, um, with a long trunk, which they describe, um, tusks made of ivory, they knew about ivory. But the story is that if it ever falls over, it can't stand up again. And that is what is going on in the illustration here. Here is um, uh, an elephant with a... A, a castle on its back, a howdah, ultimately, but the elephant and castle. Um, and the second elephant behind has fallen over, and it's got its legs in the air, and it can't stand up. And you can imagine the man on the back here saying, we only had two, and how are we going to tell the boss? Uh, they describe the elephant as white. Um, the elephant was a creature. It was a symbol of, of Jesus. Um, there's religious significance in the elephant. Um, ivory is mentioned in the Bible often. Elephants aren't actually mentioned, but they are a classical animal, and people were aware of them. Of course, at this date, no elephant had ever been to England. They knew of it only by repute. This, as I say, is about 1160, um, second half of the 12th century. And about 100 years after that, for the first time, a real elephant was brought to England, and it was um, an African elephant sent over as a... Um, a diplomatic present from St. Louis, Louis IX, King of France, to thank Henry III for helping him in the Crusades. And um, it sailed, they sailed it to, to Gravesend and, and walked it up to the Tower of London and, and made a little house for it in the Tower of London. And um, Matthew Paris, the artist monk of St. Albans, um, famous historian, um, was still alive, though he was an old man, and they told him about the elephant, and he came down from St. Albans to look at it. And... Um, he drew a picture of it, and this, which we're also bringing out for the exhibition, um, is Matthew Paris's drawing of the elephant. And it's quite interesting to put the two together. Here's a 12th century description based on classical sources. Here is a real elephant drawn from life. Now Matthew writes about here, this is in his own handwriting, this is his 1252, 1253, um, middle of the 13th century. Um, he interviews the keeper here, he describes the elephant and all about it, and Matthew has obviously read a bestiary, not necessarily this manuscript, but where the bestiary says that elephants are white, for example, he says it isn't white, it's sort of grey, and he says it has very small eyes, and it has, it, ha it has some... Um, it has a thick, hairy skin. He's perfectly correct about that. And he says it couldn't be white. He says a most interesting observation here. He says that a, a white elephant, in fact, is um, zoologically impossible. He says a white elephant, it's just down here, a white elephant is as impossible as a white crow or, he says, a black swan. Um, and, of course, in the Australian context, they had no idea about Australia, and they, to him, a black swan was as inconceivable um, as a white elephant. He interviews the keeper here, who's called Henry of Florence. Um, this poor animal is tied up by its leg. Um, it lived in the tower for two years. They fed it on meat, um, poor thing, and it died two years later, and um, they buried it in the tower, and then they regretted burying it, and they, they dug it up and used its ivory, um, and it was the last elephant to come to England until the 15th century. Right.